It's something you know the moment you walk down the ramp and first see the field. There is something special about a ballpark, and the image of that ballpark is a personal experience for fans and artists alike. The memories of ballparks really never change. Everyone seems to have a personal relationship to a ballpark where he grew up, and there's something about being in there being in that protected environment where all that really exists is the game, the fantasy. The shape of the old ballparks was really in, uh, in, in large part uh, uh, determined what kind of team played there and what the results of each game were. So that, that's the difference. Today we have the standard 330 down the line and four, 400 to center and 370 through the power alleys and it's, uh, it's boring. Players star can tarnish fairly quickly. Uh, ballparks are sort of eternal and I think it's important that some record is made to preserve what I consider shrines. This is a group of New York artists who find preserving their shrines a unique challenge. You look at the paintings you'll see that they combine a number of elements. They combine people and they have landscape and they have architecture. So from a pictorial point of view that makes them very interesting and unique for an artist really. They're not a dull subject like a still life. They're very demanding and the detail is uh, just sometimes overwhelming. I sometimes wonder how I got involved in this. With Polo Grounds Nocturne, William Feldman caught the surreal imagery of night baseball. And the idea really in that picture was to create a, a, a luminous kind of a glow on the field and that gives it a, a, a sort of a magical quality. Really what what um, in inspired me in a way and that was um, the movie The Natural and it has like a magical look to it and that's really what you try to get in, the, in, in these pictures. It's not simply a reproduction of what was, it, it's trying to, to create really a kind of magical aura about it. For Bill Purdom, Crosley Field Revisited was born from a distinct youthful perspective. Crosley Field Revisited is very interesting in that the original reference photo was taken by the artist Bill Purdom when he was eight years old and was actually sitting in this seat. We were friends with a player on the team at the time and fortunately got to go to a lot of games. And the slide was very out of focus, but outside that everything was basically in place. I was thankful that work was basically done as far as having the feeling you're sitting there, because I actually was sitting there. Andy Jurinko is well known for the polo grounds and Fenway Park, but his latest mural has a special meaning if only because of its timing. The odd thing about this painting is that the day after I started it, the painting, uh, Mike Schmidt came on the air and announced his retirement, so I, I was kind of startled by that, you know? It was eerie. Uh, the timing of it was strange. I managed to catch him hitting a home run against White Good, and it tied him with Mickey Mantle on the all-time career list, and uh, it was a special moment at the ballpark, and I wanted to, to live with that. So what does the future hold for this celebration of stadium symmetry? Each of the artists that I'm representing has a number of things planned right now. And we, before we're done, we want to do every stadium that doesn't have AstroTurf. Some folks send postcards, but the image of the ballpark led New Jersey's Doug Alford to collect them. I figured I would stay in long enough to get one postcard of each of the major league stadiums for the 16 teams that existed from 19, uh, 1903 up until expansion time. That was the beginning. And, and it took probably seven or eight years before I was able to get one of, of each. Some are very common, others are very, very uh, tough to come by, very, very scarce. The attraction for postcard collectors has a lot to do with architecture, but it goes deeper than that. Historically, you can see how ballparks have changed, you can see how, uh, how uniforms have changed, if you can see the players uh, clearly enough. Uh, those obvious things, but there's just something about the ballpark uh, which seems to attract uh, a good number of us. A unique challenge for postcard collectors is that no one knows just how many were made. There isn't a listing, it's not like a baseball card where you have from 1 to 200 and you know when you've uh, when you've acquired everything that, that exists. You can view almost anybody's collection and see something that maybe you had never seen before. So there are always cards uh, that other collectors are turning up um, that you keep adding to your wants list. Alfred has more than 2,000 postcards, and naturally, some 
are special. When it comes to favorites, there are a couple that stand out in my mind. One is Washington Park in Brooklyn, preceding uh, Ebbets Field prior to 1913. Another one is a, a, a more modern postcard from the mid to late 30s. It's an aerial view that shows both Yankee Stadium and the polo grounds simultaneously in the same photo. Those are two cards that I, at one point, I figured I would never own. I had seen in other collections, but, but never thought that I would uh, uh, come across them. And though the camera is the source for most of Alfred's cards, he likens them to Rembrandt's with a stamp. Most of the people who took the pictures of the postcards were using very good lenses, very good cameras. So the distinction in detail is, uh, is usually extraordinary. Uh, and no doubt in my mind, yes, they are definitely little miniature works of art. But no image of a ballpark is more intricate than Brad Merrill's 500,000-piece scale model of Yankee Stadium circa 1973. In 1971, the Yankees decided to uh, uh, sell Yankee Stadium to New York City. Uh, and uh, to keep them in New York City, uh, the city renovated the ballpark, and I wanted to build a monument to Yankee Stadium and to the Yankees. It took Brad 8,000 hours over 16 years, a few more than the real thing. Well, the actual stadium took only 284 working days to complete, so this was kind of a mammoth project in itself. Brad was almost finished when disaster struck. A closet door, a top shelf, and gravity. It fell right on the roof and I was about two light towers away from completing the model. And I cried for about a year. And uh, then I said, I have to rebuild this. I have to, I have to finish it. So what I did was I gathered up all the broken pieces, saved what I could, made new ones. And here we are, five years later, she's all done. And delighting thousands at the Baseball Hall of Fame. But Brad hopes someday She'll come home. I think that the model actually belongs in Yankee Stadium. I would like it to be a part of uh, Yankee history. Uh, after all, it has taken me half my life to build it.